During the past three years, there's been growing pressure to change how ICT is taught in schools. Firstly, so that it's more interesting and relevant to the pupils' immediate needs and interests, so that it better prepares them for life in a digital world, and finally, so that it encourages those with an aptitude for computers to study computing at college and university, and for those with an interest in computers to work in the IT industry in the future. As early as the 1970s, computers have been used in the classroom. Computer science teachers have taught key stage three and four pupils how to program and how to make things happen with the technology. The BBCB computer enabled all teachers to use a computer in their own classrooms, and many teachers even developed their own programs. But as computers became more and more powerful, students were then able to make their own multimedia applications with audio, video, and animated text. At the same time, the teaching of computer programming diminished and only at GCE A-level was it formally taught. ICT in schools was dominated by skills training in office-type software such as word processors, spreadsheets, databases and presentation packages. The arrival of the internet meant that the information that the computer provided was even greater, so ICT focused on searching the World Wide Web and creating web pages, wikis, blogs and e-portfolios. During this time, the focus was on what you could do with a computer, rather than how the computer works. In 2008, a group of professionals got together to discuss what was going wrong in ICT teaching. The teachers among the group voiced the concern that the computational thinking activities that students were doing many years previously were no longer being taught. This was binary, algorithms, programming, precision and logic. It was concluded that the school ICT curriculum focused too heavily on skills and techniques that did not have an immediate value to the pupils, and this was what made ICT so unpopular. Also, those with an interest in computers, hardware and programming were put off ICT. They didn't realise that the GCE computing was very different. From that initial meeting formed a grassroots organisation, Computing at School. CAS now has a membership of over 3,000 teachers, all of whom are looking for better ways of teaching the developing subject of computing. In January 2012, Michael Gove spoke out at the BET exhibition, announcing the disapplication of the ICT programme of study. That is, schools no longer had to teach what was specified but were free until September 2014 to teach whatever they thought best in the ICT lessons. This gave schools the freedom to try innovative approaches and new curriculum content. At the same time, he coined the phrase computer science, which focused developments on parts of the curriculum that had previously been ignored. Computer science focuses on three main aspects. Firstly, the hardware of computers, which is how they work and how they're assembled. This includes technologies from the traditional desktop computers through to powerful handheld devices and also dedicated chips in everyday appliances. The programming of computers involves how to make devices do what you want them to do. This involves a wide range of activities, developing applications running on PCs, making apps for Androids, using control and sensing technology devices, and also scientific data capture. Understanding systems is the third focus. This involves understanding the way that computers and organizations work together and interact. This includes understanding networking, protocols, data, and the logic of circuitry. But the most important feature of computer science teaching is computational thinking. This includes problem decomposition, which is breaking down complex things into smaller units, pattern recognition and data analysis, trying to better understand what is happening, abstraction, which is removing unnecessary detail from complex situations, modeling, using the computer to represent real activities, algorithm design, i.e. planning the sequence of actions. Logic, using Boolean operators of AND, OR and NOT. Visualization, which is developing the skills to both understand different diagrammatic forms and also create images to represent systems and processes. The Royal Society published its report in January 2012 and concluded that the curriculum called computing should involve three key aspects. Computer science, the understanding of computers and how they work, information technology, the productive and creative use of technology, and digital literacy. Digital literacy should be understood to mean the basic skill or ability 
to use a computer confidently, safely and effectively. This includes the ability to use office software such as word processors, email and presentation software, the ability to create and edit images, audio and video, and the ability to use a web browser and internet search engines. These are the skills that teachers of other subjects at secondary schools should be able to assume that their pupils have as an analogue of being able to read and write. Children first learn programming at the infant school using programmable toys like these Romas and Bebots. They start to understand algorithms by writing down instructions that are given to these robots. They then learn to follow instructions like this short program. By following this step by step, they learn the importance of precision and the idea of iteration. A six-year-old would do an abstraction if the teacher asked them to draw the school. They create a simplified plan with the important details. Their classroom, the playground, the toilets, the school office and the gate to go home. This visualization is the abstraction. The classic abstraction is the representation of London by means of the tube map or even a pupil's school timetable. We also teach digital literacy. From the age of five years old, students are taught to communicate safely and respectfully online, using email to communicate with friends, experts and bots. In Key Stage 2, students are taught how search engines work. The PDCE IT and Computer Science programme prepares you for teaching computing in secondary school and post-16 level. There is a strong focus on computer science, but really developing the pupils' computational thinking skills is what lies at the heart of the teaching. Information technology, the creative and productive use of computers, is an important element for developing pupils' understanding of what computers can do, enabling their creativity and ensuring that they can use the technology in a wide range of settings. Digital literacy with ideas of copyright, safe working, data protection, misuse and abuse, e-safety and cyberbullying are also discussed in schools. Southampton University runs a PGCE in Information Technology and Computer Science. If you're interested in joining this course, you will need some prior knowledge in computer programming. If, however, you've got little or no experience of programming, you may benefit from joining a Subject Knowledge Enhancement course. The SKE programmes will introduce you to the different types of programming environments, the new computing and computer science GCSE courses, and the ideas of computational thinking. The teacher training course starts in September of each year. In the induction period, you will spend time in a primary school and a sixth form college. Some of your sessions will focus on being a teacher. These are called professional themes classes, and they ensure that you understand your responsibilities and what is expected of you in the school. The subject sessions will deal with how computing is organised and taught, how learners learn and technical aspects of computing. I think it's useful to, so we can all support each other, so if someone's got a problem at a certain school, we'll come into university sessions, we'll talk about it. Also we all share resources when we all come back to the university, so it's fantastic, we really enjoy the university sessions. There will be two school placements, the first before Christmas and then the second and the major placement which runs from the spring half term all the way through to the summer half term. The university will find a placement for you from their partnerships, a placement that's best suited to your location and your professional needs. You'll have a curriculum tutor when you're studying at university, but when at school you'll have a curriculum mentor who's there to guide you through your development as a teacher. The PGCE in IT and Computer Science has an extensive website of resources. It also contains links to the current trainees' websites where they present their work and celebrate their achievements. So in terms of being at Southampton Uni rather than other institutes, um, it seems to look good on your CV as well. That employers seem to look at the fact that you've come from Southampton Uni and it has a um, very good reputation. The course is like one of the best things ever did to be honest. Like, it's, it's a tough year, it's a very tough year but it's good, it's rewarding, it's challenging and from it I got a job and it's, I got a job in March actually, end of March I got a job so the opportunities is fantastic really. Get the experience of going into two schools, really been good. As we enter this new phase of teaching about computers in whatever form they may take, you as the people specifically trained in teaching about computational thinking and computer science will be at the forefront of curriculum developments. You'll be able to bring new ideas into the classroom and bring new exciting activities into the experiences 
of the pupils that you're teaching. What's more, you'll be entering a career where job satisfaction always outweighs the challenges.